Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Live It Up. This is the show where we explore and discuss how to take your life to that next level and beyond. We cover health, wealth, relationships, and how to create a life that really feels good because after all, that's what we ultimately want. We want to feel good. I'm your host and coach, Fletcher Ellingson, and I'm very fortunate to have by my side today the very curious, intelligent, articulate, compassionate, oh. capable, and the best travel partner I've ever had, Amy Ellingson. Great hey. introduction. I know. <laughs> you deserve it. How you doing? You. I'm good. I'm good. Good, good. Uh, we're going to be talking about some health topics after the commercial break. Mm -hmm. We're going to check in first with you, me, and what's going well in the world. But Got it. later on, we're going to be talking about what? Birth control. All right. Yeah. You may have not had this conversation for a long time. It might have been years, but we're going to have it. I figured it was relevant, whether people are currently on birth control or whether it's about their children, on, you know, I mean, their adult children on birth control or yeah. things have changed. There's new options. So there's new options. It's kind people. of relevant to lots of people. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about birth control after the commercial break. Health is the first wealth, so stick around for that conversation. It's going to be good. But before we get to that, before we go any further, I want to remind you that if you have questions that you would like us to answer on or off the air, you can email them directly to me at Fletcher at FletcherEllingson.com. You don't need to suffer. There are answers and solutions and ways to move forward powerfully. And I want you to consider visiting me, visiting my website. Perhaps it's time to invest in yourself. And what I mean by that is there's, a, there's all sorts of free things you can go do at my website. There's a happiness quotient. There's a, the ultimate uh, success formula you can download. But I really want to ask you, when's the last time you invested in yourself? What does it look like to invest in yourself? That's a pretty good question, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for a minute because okay. we've talked about it in the past. To you, what does it mean to invest in yourself? Well, I think you could. I could look at it a few different ways. I mean, one would be financially, like I purchased that stationary exercise bike. Uh, that was a financial uh, investment in my health and well-being. I think also um, investing in time, so taking time out to meditate or taking time out to talk to someone on the phone that you need to catch up with. I think the other way I would look at it is investing in yourself as far as um, making decisions that are healthy and in your best interest. Maybe that means saying no to things. So like investing in, like maybe just investing in the idea of like believing in, you know, mm -hmm. like being invested mm -hmm. in yourself would also be making, trying to make decisions that um, serve you. Yeah, yeah. I like all of that. I think also, when we talk about investing, you might invest in yourself by taking an online course. Mm -hmm. Or now you can probably enroll in a uh, in-person course as well, right? Yeah. Um, or we're big on seminars. Uh, so investing in a seminar uh, or investing in a, yeah, a, a downloaded course or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's some, we invest in a lot of things in our life, like we invest in a house or our cars or toys, different, you know, experiences. But I think the concept of investing in yourself to continue to evolve your thinking so that you can um, uh, enjoy and enrich your life is, is really valuable. Yeah, well, I think one of the things we've talked about before is we set aside um, money in different envelopes as a way to budget. They're just virtual envelopes on a spreadsheet. But we've had a personal development fund yeah. for the whole time we've been together. So we put aside money so we can have money to attend that course. We want to attend the seminar by, you know, pay for coaching, um, do different things that we feel like fit kind of the personal growth or personal development. Yeah. And I think closing up this discussion, I, the last thing I want to say is I feel like every time we have made an investment in a course um, or something like that, it has paid off. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for you sure. Know, you know, yeah. fi either financially or relationally or spiritually yeah. or physically. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's a good thing to consider. Is it time to invest in yourself? Uh, so moving on. Yeah. Let's talk about some wins. 
because okay. we want to again this is the practice of feeling good and part of that practice is just recognizing what's going well in our lives and calling it out like really speaking it into the physical space so that our brain gets to engage in it in a different manner and then we become practice at seeing what's working so let's start with you what's working well in your life well um one that we just had a family i mean a friend gathering last weekend i think it was mm -hmm. and it has felt so good to get together with our friends again like yeah. it just feels soothing i love it and it's fun and the girls were there our kids and um that was really really fun yeah like, we laughed a lot we laughed a lot quality good quality time um, the other thing that I feel like is going well uh, is my job. Um, I love the team I work with up there in Brewster. I'm getting more and more patients um, as a few different doctors have retired up there. And um, I, it's really going well up there for me in Brewster. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, yeah. You definitely come back with good, feel good reports. And, you know, also um, one of the things I think that makes that place go so well is the CEO up there, um, Scott. Graham. Graham, he talk about investing in yourself, right? I mean, he's invested in himself uh, with personal development as well. Yeah, and yeah. it's part of what he disperses through his teams. Yeah, yeah. So, what's working well for you? What's working well for me? Um, well, so last weekend, I think it was last weekend, I had a killer bike climb up McNeil Canyon. If you're from this area, you know McNeil Canyon. It's a 3,100 foot elevation climb. And my friend Don and I set out to do that. We both felt like we were uh, not ready for it, or uh, it was it was a, a bigger climb than we were prepared for. But we did it, and the win was not that we just made it to the top of this of this hill, but the win was that three quarters of the way up, my, the voices in my head were so loud, mm. and they were telling me stop, <laughs> turn around, this is too hard, this is uncomfortable, uh, you might injure yourself, you are not trained up for this. And they were so loud, I feel like if there was someone had been next to me, they could have heard those voices. <laughs> That's how loud That's they were. Funny. And what I was sharing with uh, Amy earlier was that those voices were just showing up. Like it wasn't me like really thinking this, it was just my automatic thinking. They were showing up without my permission, consent or approval. And it gave me the opportunity to really um, like override that program. And cause, I, cause I, I was now having a conversation with myself. My voice would say one thing, stop doing this. And I would say, I'm gonna go just a little bit further. I'm gonna go to that point. And then when I get to that point, I pick another point. So I was really having this conversation. It's kind of like the angel and the devil on the, your shoulder, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But anyways, made it. That was a huge win. Do I want to do it again? No, I don't. Um, but I'm glad I did it. And it just made me stronger and um, more confident. Yeah, it's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And so, so in, that, in light of that, yeah, I feel like uh, exercise is going well. Um, I, I had to let my standards slip a bit over the past nine months, and I feel like I'm getting, raising my standard again. So swimming, uh, biking, and I even went on a, a, a run the other day, which felt really good because I haven't been running for various reasons, but that was a big win too. Cool. Yeah. All right, we got a couple minutes more before we go to commercial. Okay. Now let's talk about what's working well or what's, what are some wins in the, in the world. world. So we printed some things off. So the, I'll go first here. So in Tanzania, they have their first female president. So I'm sure I won't say this right, but Sam, Samaya Suluhu Hassan. She was uh, sworn in in March um, after the death of their previous president. And what, what we were inspired by is that the previous president had been banning media by force and restricting uh, press freedoms and um, even completely silenced several publications. And so that was what she has done straight away is reverse those orders and um, has said that the media should not be banned. Yeah, really cool, so really powerful. Great. We like that. Um, following on that, Christine Wormuth was una uh, unanimously confirmed by the Senate as the country's first female army secretary. So go women yeah. all around the world, very cool. Excellent. 
The Australian government has allotted $100 million to restoration, protection, and improving the well-being of ocean areas. And it has been successfully boosting survival, oh, it has also been boosting survival rates of the endangered wallabies by relocating them to a refuge. Cool. Love it. So, I mean, Australia has all that gorgeous reef and yes. I, I had heard that the that the Great Barrier Reef was really suffering, so. Yeah, I think they said 85% of all Australians live within 30 miles of a shoreline. Wow. So um, it's cool that they're really taking that seriously and putting putting some money into it. Um, let's talk about people right here on the West Coast in Washington State. People living on the entire West Coast now can download an app in order to get early earthquake warnings. The system was originally built and launched in 2018 for the Los Angeles region, but Washington State has now been added to the mobile alert system as well, and people can go to their app store and download um, MyShake or Quake Alert USA if they want to uh, get early quake alerts, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I wonder if it works for Hawaii. Anyway, yeah. maybe not. The country of Chile recently passed a landmark law banning hard to recycle plastic items from the food industry. Yes. This will be stuff like plastic plates, straws, and to-go containers. They will soon be banned from being used and that will result in a reduction in plastic waste by approximately 23,000 tons. I love that one. Yeah. That one makes me happy. And one, one final piece of good news. In China, they reported they now have 800,000 public electric vehicle chargers um, available, signaling that they are gearing up for electric the, uh, the EV revolution as the country continues to de decrease their use of fossil fuels. I love this one because, you know, I love EV. Um, and so that feels really good, too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's some good stuff that's going on in the world. We're going to be back uh, in just a couple minutes to talk about Birth control. Birth control. Stay with us. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Live It Up. We're here with Amy. Hello, Amy. Hello. Uh, what are we talking about today? Birth control. We're talking about birth control. And I, I just have to give the audience fair warning that when Fletcher was reading through my write-up, he told me that he was having a hard time not giggling, which I was really confused by because I talk about this stuff all day long, and I think a lot of women are used to talking about it, but I think he uh, felt like he was back in like the <laughs> sixth grade or something or whenever talking about like sex ed. So if he has a funny look on his face or starts giggling, it's because he is not used to talking about this topic, even though that seems weird to me, but I guess just my life is very different than how you spend yours in the day. So it's very different. I talk and about this stuff all day long. And it's an important topic, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's dive into it. Uh, I am aware that there are various forms of, t uh, of birth control to use to prevent pregnancy, but let's dive into it. What are they? So um, all birth control basically works by preventing uh, the egg and sperm from meeting. And so, uh, because that's gonna prevent pregnancy, obviously. And so the w one way to look at this is to look, break it down to kind of some categories. One would be um, a category of permanent methods. And that would include the, like a tubal ligation or that's called tying your tubes. Obviously, if, you, if a woman had a hysterectomy where the uterus was removed, they, could also, they would also not get pregnant. Um, and then a vasectomy, which most people have heard about, where, the, where I'll talk about that here in a minute. So a tubal ligation, we'll just start with that. It's a pretty common form of birth control for women. And so uh, a couple of different ways it can be done. One is shortly after um, a woman has delivered a baby, usually within the first 24 to 48 hours, you can actually do it by making a small incision just around at the belly button because the uterus is still high up and you can have that's called a postpartum uh, tubal ligation it can also be done at time of c-section and then um, it can also be done laparoscopically so a woman does have to have anesthesia for this there are a variety of methods women ask me about this frequently it, they the tubes sometimes are clipped they're sometimes cut they're sometimes um well they're, if they're cut they're also tied um so quick question about that. Yeah. Uh, clip, like, what do you mean? I mean, There's in my a mind, metal clip. Like a paper clip? Uh, no. It's like a, just a solid clip. 
and then you go clip, clip, and then cut in the middle. Oh, okay. Uh, there's another one, I don't know the name of it, where it kind of clips it in like a little, bring it up together. So there's a variety of methods. And when, and when you say uh, cut versus ties, when you're tying the tubes, you're like literally like tying a knot in it? or Yeah, you take a suture around it and then tie it. Because okay. the tube, so the fallopian tube, so you have your uterus, then your ovaries, they're not actually connected. The way they're connected is through the fallopian tube. So the tubes leave the uterus, and so the eggs from the ovaries are released into the tube one, one side at a time each month, and then that egg goes from the fallopian tube into the uterus. So if you cut the tubes or you, you um, interrupt the path from the egg to get into the uterus, then there is no egg to fertilize. <clears throat> And it's about 99.5% effective. And, and another question women have is if it affects their hormones or their periods or their sex life, and it really shouldn't because you're not messing with their hormones, you're not messing with their uterus, which is where their period comes from. And so it's a... Okay, I have another question about that. Yeah. So where does the egg go then? Um, it just go, it just kind of gets uh, resorbed back by your body. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So the other permanent <clears throat> option is a vasectomy, and that's an in-office procedure where the vas deferens is cut. So the vas deferens is a tube that is located um, via the scrotum, and it, it's the tube that carries the sperm from where it's made to the outside. And the surgery is well tolerated. Uh, men are, you know, back on their feet in a few days. I mean, they're on their feet even that day, but you know, more active within a few days. And it's about 99.9% .9 effective. And also a question that men have, does it affect the hormones, does it affect their sex life? And it really shouldn't, uh, it doesn't that I know of. And about, in the US, I found this interesting, about 5% of married men in their reproductive years have had a vasectomy, which seems kind of lower seems super low. than I thought, but um, that's what the number is. So, this, so that makes me wanna ask another question. What's the rate for women getting tubes tied? Um, I think that, I looked that up, I think it's about 15%. The thing is women definitely bear the burden of birth control, not saying that they should, but that is how it's been. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, all right, so those are the, uh, those are the um, irreversible yes, methods. Yes, like the permanent, yeah, right. So what are, what are more of the reversible methods? So there are a lot of those, so we'll take a break in the middle of them, but that there's a barrier method, right, which we've all heard about, like the male condom, there's female condoms, diaphragms, sponges, cervical cap, and those are all just meant to mechanically prevent the meeting of the sperm to the egg. Um, they are not the most effective with failure rates around 15 to 21%. Whoa. The Yeah, the male condom, if it's used like perfectly, it is better, um, but they, they aren't great, you know, when they're just used alone. There's also um, intrauterine methods called an IUD or an IUS, and that means that the birth control, uh, the, the what you're using for birth control is located within the uterus, and about 14% of women in the US that need birth control are using this type. It can also be used for a few different things besides birth control, but the two types of IUDs we have, there's a hormonal IUD, most known as the Mirena IUD, um, and this IUD slowly releases the hormone pr uh, called a type of progestin, and it works by, it's kind of an interesting way that it works. It changes um, the environment of the cervix, which stops the sperm from going into the uterus, and it also changes the lining of the uterus, and it also uh, partially suppress suppresses the rele release of eggs each month. And it's 99.9% .9 effective, and one of the most common forms of birth control in the world. It can stay in the uterus for three to six years, depending on the Whoa. type uh, that it has used. It does require an in-office procedure that can be uncomfortable. Removal is usually easy, but sometimes women will need a small procedure to remove the IUD. The, um, just one more thing is that the other uh, IUD type is the copper IUD, um, and that's called the Paragard, and that has a wire of copper on the stem. These are T-shaped, uh, the IUDs are, and it causes a little bit of inflammation surrounding the IUD, which is damaging to the sperm and also damaging to an egg. And so that's how that one works, which is, uh, you know, I don't know exactly how that works. And it's about 99% effective and it can stay in for 10 years. Um, wow. It can make women's periods heavier and more painful. 
So I, I would say the Moreno one is used a little bit more often than this one. We don't have time to discuss it on today, but I would love to know, like, how did they even figure that I, out? I don't even want to know that, actually. It's probably, that like, some so bad wild. experimental. <laughs> I don't Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Quick break. Let's go to a quick commercial, and we'll be back to finish it up right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Live It Up. We're here with Amy. We're talking about birth control, the reversible kinds, the irreversible kinds, and now we're, what are we talking about? We're talking about the hormonal kinds, reversible. The hormonal kind. So um, the next one would be the birth control pill, which most people have heard about. It's been around a long time. Is this like the most common form of birth control? Um, you know, not necessarily. About 13% of women use that. Oh. Because there's, there are other ones that, are, that work uh, better, and especially for younger women, you don't have to remember to do it every day. Mm -hmm. So um, the birth control pill has been around, at least widely, widely available since the 1960s. It's definitely undergone some changes. Um, it's a combination of estrogen and a type of progestin, and it works by um, sending a signal to the body that, so the ovaries do not release an egg. So it basically kind of puts the ovaries on a bit of a rest while you're taking them. It's about 93% effective, um, and again, used by about 13% of uh, women. Um, you do have to take the pill every day, <clears throat> and it cannot be used by women over age 35 that smoke cigarettes because uh, there is a slightly increased risk of, of blood clots mm. in, the, in this type of hormonal birth control, and actually all of the combined estrogen progestin pills or formulations. There's also a patch that, um, you have questions, don't you? Have, there's right. also a patch which has the same type of hormones, but a woman wears it on her skin, and uh, you apply a patch each week, and then you have a break week. So anyway, uh, that's about 93% effective and well tolerated. There is a ring, which also has the same combination of, of hormones, and it's like a ring like this big, and it's smushy, it's plastic, and the hormones are embedded in the plastic, so a woman just kind of smushes it and puts it up inside and herself, it's nothing technical, and then it just kind of opens up so no, it, you don't even know what's in there. And then that, that lasts for three weeks and then a woman can just take that one out. You have your break week and then you put a new one in and that's about 93% effective. So many options. I know, and there's um, the one more is the shot, which is the Depo Provera shot. It has medroxyprogesterone. A woman gets a shot usually kind of in her tush area um, every three months. Um, it's about 96% 90, effective. It mostly works by also suppressing the releasing of eggs each month. Um, it definitely can cause some weight gain and some acne um, in, in women, but a lot of women really like it um, because it's just easy and it usually makes you not get your period anymore. So okay. anyway, that's kind of the spiel. There's lots of options out there. Um, I mean, it's rare that there's not something that would work for a woman if she is uh, desiring some type of birth control. I'm always a huge fan of the vasectomy. Um, more men, I believe, uh, should get that if, they're, mm -hmm. if they're, they're needing birth control in their lives. It's a, it's a really nice option when you know you're finished with having babies, so. Cool. Uh, thanks so much for all that. You didn't um, even giggle. I laugh. didn't even giggle. You I found it very interesting. Good, Yeah, good. yeah. All right, well, hey, now it's time to get out there. Be a source of kindness. Be a source of contribution. You do have something to offer this world, and we believe in you.